So when it's the enemy, homie, don't pay it no mind. Stay about your father's business and keep yeah. him over. Be careful out there, man. Uh, these people, um, they come up with all kind of stuff, and for for like baby Christians to get caught up and with the with with these people, um, it it can. It can lead you down a crazy road, man. You start believing what these these people are, are doing and saying. Um, I'll put it this way, man. When I when, whenever I came out of the occult, when I when I got born again in in 2000, and God came back into my life, rid me of demons. This is what I did. Short testimony. I was so full of demons here. I was in and out of trances that it was like. I, I wasn't doing it myself. Like I'd be watching TV and it would suck me into the spirit realm and I'd see all these spirits flying back and forth and they're talking and I couldn't understand them. I'd come back in my body wow. gasping for breath. Crazy. I'm crying. I need help. And I had been filled with the Holy Spirit two years prior to that. So I knew that there was a peace and I would put on Benny Hinn. I'd turn the TV on and he'd be praying for people. They're falling out in the glory of God, falling back and it's just peaceful look on these people's face. And I watch, and we'd be smoking, and my brother's wife's like, man, turn that off. That's fake. I'm like, no, nah, man, that's real, man. I used to be there. I used to do that, man. I used to I used to get in the presence of God. That's real, y'all. And uh, I just got to this weird place where I called out to God, and I got rid of all my idols, threw everything away, and told my, my girl, gave her an ultimatum, said, look, you either serve God with me or we, we, get, we split up, right? And she was crying. I threw everything away, man posters, CDs, books, idols, all of it. Threw it all in the garbage bag, chunked everything we own, man. And um and she, you know, she said, "Well, how, you know, how can I believe in Jesus? I don't believe in Jesus." I said, "Well, if you can believe in the, the goddess and the god of the moons and the spirit entities and animals, if you can believe in that stuff, you can believe in Jesus. Just give it a try. And if two weeks pass by and our life isn't 100% better, then we'll go back to serving these other gods." I said, "Give it two weeks." So she said, okay, she, we prayed together. Man, I got I was coughing up blood every day. It was wild stuff, man. Mm. And um, hearing voices, seeing spirits and shadows in my house. And um, I opened up the phone book, and I called all the churches I can find. I said, I knew Assemblies of God, non-denominational. Those are the churches you want, right, who believe in, uh, you know what I'm saying, people going through deliverance. And I called, and I left a message on all the answer machines. Hi, I believe I have a demon. I need prayer. Can somebody help me? I just called through them all, right? The next day, one pastor called me back. And I said, hey, I believe I, I'm filled with demons and I need prayer. Can you help me? He said, sure. Give me your address. I'll come over to your house. The pastor came to my house. Uh, he prayed with me and my girl. And then he came to pick us up for church after that. Bible study, church. And I was feeling better. I had given my life back to God. I was feeling better, but I was still in this weird haze, man. I would go there. I would feel like I was dreaming the whole time. And the Lord was just, it was just a long, hard road, man, to kind of get where I needed to be. And uh, um, so he picked us up, bring us to church, all that. And then I moved away about three weeks into that. I moved away, moved back to Alabama. So this was in Louisiana. I moved to Alabama. A um, couple months go by. We go back to visit family. We go to visit that church. They have us saying, hey, Brother Derek's here. Everybody, you know, he, he came to the Lord. Tell your story. Have me stand up. They clap and all that. Sit back down. It was a charismatic church. They'll, you know, go around the church seven times and shout and Jericho and they're dancing and tambourines. Re regular Pentecostal church. They are, they're weirdos. They were totally weirdo. The pastor's a weirdo. Children. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it, it, it was a weird place. But most of them are. It didn't seem nothing different. About a year went by, and we went back to visit family. We wanted to go back to the church. I go to the church to see what time they op they open for service, and all the numbers were and, and times were scratched off the the glass. They scratched. You could see the traces where they scratched it off, and then they had all the windows were had um aluminum foil over all the windows. So I was like, oh, this is weird. And it said Sir, had a sign on the door: service by invite only. Oh, this is weird. Let me try to call them. So we go home, get in a phone book. You know, I'm trying to find the church's number. They won't answer at the church. So I call people with the same last name as the pastor. Like, I really wanted to go back, right? And they're, like, hanging up on me. Don't you ever call this number again? We're not affiliated. Hanging up. Hanging up. I was like, man, what's going on? So we didn't get to go. A year after that, my mom comes in town into Alabama and visits us for my daughter's birthday. She said, did y'all hear about that church y'all used to go to? I said, no, nah, what happened? She said, oh, they was all over CNN. See, and then what happened? The the pastors were having sexual 
intercourse with the children and they were doing no. animal sacrifices at the church. I said, what? She said, yeah, teachers, sheriff officers, police officers, people up on like, on like the mayor's council and stuff. They were all in on it. They would bring their kids to church and swap their kids out at a church. And they were killing animals and cats and painting pentagrams and burying them all over the church. It's a whole thing on them online. It was on CNN. It was so weird. And, and I read the story and it said the way he would get people is he would find people who were struggling with drug addiction and he would go pick them up and bring them to church and build rapport with them and bring them back and forth. Oh, the church. Wow. I'm like, wow, he was coming to pick us up, bringing us to church. You know what I'm saying? And like, I was like, man, um, so it, to the appearance, man, it looked like a regular church. You don't know what's going on behind closed doors, man. That's why you got to be, you got to be on your game, man. Like when we talk about this weird <laughs> stuff going on in church, sometimes it starts out with little stuff like that, man, just little bitty stuff. And then, but I don't know where that, I, in my mind can't find where that moves. It escalates. How does it get there? Yeah. Right. I don't know. And they were like bringing their kids and they had rules. Like you could do whatever you want. Just no bruises. Do not bruise the children. And man, they, bruh, I went to school with some of them kids and stuff, and I didn't even know nothing like that was going on, man. It's crazy out here. You got to be careful, man. You got to be careful. There's no telling who you're dealing with, what you're dealing with. You got to be walking in the spirit of Christ to be able to discern what's going on. I was a baby Christian. I, they, he could have took advantage of me. It, something like that would happen. I, yeah. I would have told. I would have I would have screamed. So they lucky I didn't find it. I would have screamed on them a year in advance. But that's just wild. You don't know who you're dealing with, man. And this stuff happens all the time. This isn't no one. Oh, the isolated incidents. This stuff happens all the time, man. People get in it, mess it. I mean, you hear it that people don't want to deal with Christians because of the Catholic Church and what's going on with, with that whole thing. And they always use that as the standard or something for Christians. That's nowhere around what we're affiliated with and stuff, man. But um, you just got to be careful out there, y'all. It's deep, man. I made it out. Um, well, well no. Nah, I mean, as a, as a baby Christian, man, you're, you only know what you're taught. Exactly. You know what I mean? So, you know, if something doesn't feel right, search the scriptures. Ask other Christians, man. You yeah, know what I mean? Ask like, other people, yeah. Yeah, ask other people. Like, the only the only dumb question is a question unasked. Yeah. So, what was you going to say? I'm, I was going to say, we'll go ahead and jump into some of these phone calls. I got this call that's been here since the beginning. So, uh, we hope that you've enjoyed listening to this excerpt from the Truth Seeker podcast. To hear this show in its entirety, head on over to truthseeker.com. Your world.